Hey YouTubers, your old buddy Platt, and we're tuning on our beer style series today. Uh, today we're going to talk about another beer that's uh, based on a ingredient. We're going to talk about honey beers. Uh, let's go over the numbers real quick. SRM is going to be between 1 and 50. IBUs are going to be between 1 and 100. Uh, ABV, kind of like the other categories, are going to vary greatly. 2.5 up to 12%. And uh, temperature-wise, we're going to serve this beer at around 50 to 55 degrees. Uh, honey can be used to, to produce lagers or ales. Um, you can use honey in nearly every one of the classic style of beers, whether you want to do a, a stout, a blonde ale, a porter, you, know, you name it, you can use it in practically every classic style. But it can also be the base ingredient for really unique experimental type beers. Um, also, what makes it great in creating unique beers is because honey is, there's not just blank honey. There's several styles of honey out there. There's clover honey, sage honey, orange blossom honey, uh, jalapeno honey. So besides being able to add honey to all different styles of beer, you can use all different styles of honey with all different styles of beer. So if you're a brewer, that's a great thing. It adds great versatility uh, to this beer. Um, also, if you're a brewer, whether a production brewer or home brewer like me, um, you can add honey either during the boil or after the boil. Um, so that allows a little versatility, something that you couldn't do with your malt. Um, honey is also similar to the malt you'll use in a beer and where it's different from, let's say, an ingredient like pumpkin. Honey is a fermentable. So honey can be used to tweak the APV of a beer or because it does add more fermentables to the mash bill, a brewer can also play with that mash bill, you know, maybe take out this grain or that malt, you know. It, because of the fermentables, it allows the uh, brewer, again, to, to tweak, tweak the beer a little bit. Um, that's why, you know, a lot of brewers will like using this. Um, as far as the carbonation body of the beer, uh, the esters finish. Uh, honey beers can vary greatly um, because again we can put them in different type of beers so you won't see consistency on those items with honey per se. Uh, one thing to note is the hop bitterness flavor can vary in these beers too but hop plays an important role because again we're adding an additional fermentable. So if you're producing let's say you want to produce a honey blonde and it's just from home brewer point of view. Realize that if you add honey on top of your regular blonde ale recipe, you need to adjust the hop level. And so, uh, again, even though hop might not be a predominant flavor in these beers, it still plays an important role because honey is a fermentable. Um, even though, another thing to point out, again, that honey beers vary, but there are a couple of food pairings that work in general with most honey style beers. And that is uh, bruschetta and ricotta cheese. Uh, the particular beer we're going to try today and I'm kind of excited about is the Bilching Beaver Miso Honey Blonde. Um, this is a little San Diego. It comes in at 5.5%. Um, Bilching Beaver is a San Diego brewery that has uh, five locations throughout the area. A couple of tasting rooms, a couple of production um, facilities. Um, I have not tried this one, but I'm kind of excited because I've tried a couple of their other beers. Uh, they do some couple of great peanut butter beers. They do a peanut butter milk stout, and then they have a limit release, a peanut butter latte that tastes like liquid mud, nutter butter. It is to die for. So I'm kind of excited to try this one out. So let's give it a try. got a good almost two finger very light khaki hit on this um, we've got somewhat cloudy not real cloudy but a little bit of cloudiness in this beer this is a very uh, dark golden maybe a hint of copper in this let's give her a nose all right a little sweetness a little malt Sweet sweetness too, not just 
Uh, not much honey sweetness, more malt sweetness to it, but uh, and uh, no real hops I've noticed on the nose. So let's give her a try. That's nice. Um, the honey is just faint. Uh, this is just more of a really nice drink of a blonde ale. Um, the honey's more of a suggestion. It does give a nice little sweet punch in the front of the tongue. Um, doesn't spread out too much. Body wise, this is a you know typical of a lot of blonde ales. A nice drinker goes down easy. Um, Overall, I'm going to say a decent beer. Um, does it match the peanut butter beers I've tasted from them? Um, that being said, this is probably a simpler style beer. Um, to me, this beer is just, we've done a blonde ale, we're going to add some honey. Not a honey beer that happens to be a blonde ale, if that kind of makes any sense. But still fairly thirst quenching. Um... I almost, with the sweetness and the little maltiness I get, almost would like or wonder what would this would taste like with maybe like a jalapeno honey, a little little, little spiciness to play with it. But uh, that's it, still very drinkable beer. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Any questions, comments, or concerns, you can leave them in the comment section or you can contact me on the com comment or Twitter page. Sorry. Until next time, bottoms up.